Can you use a two meter antenna for six meters? Rig expert stick versus zoom. And how often should you create a new POTA log? Coming up this time on Mailbag Monday. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K8MRD. If you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. I would love to hear from you. We've got some really cool questions, and I have some answers. <laughs> So let's dive right in. This first viewer asked, I purchased a, however you want to say that word, Wuxon Ocean, whatever, two meter, six meter handheld, which appears to be working just fine. I was contemplating getting the 42 inch antenna. By chance, is this something you've checked out and or tested? I'm far from an antenna expert, but hypothetically, wouldn't the 42 inch length of the antenna do okay on six meters? So I don't have a 42 inch Abri, I have uh, an 18 inch Abri. And these are pretty cool antennas. They, uh, you know, they just kind of, they're like those uh, wrist straps back in elementary school in the the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, whatever, those slap bracelets. Um, And they work good, uh, but 42 inches is a little short for six meters. As we can see, uh, I have an app on my phone called Antenna Tool, and I just typed in 52 megahertz there for the frequency and changed it to vertical. And we can see an eighth inch vertical is two and a quarter feet, or 0.69 meters. A quarter wave vertical is four and a half feet, or 1.37 meters. So that 42 inches is a little short or it's a little long for an eighth inch or an eighth wave rather. But me being me, the antenna nerd, I said to myself, self, you have a 42 inch two meter antenna. It is this MFJ, what is this? The 1714S and this is a telescopic 42 inch two meter antenna. So I said, well, at a eighth wave, we're what, two two and a quarter feet, maybe that'll work. Or at a quarter wave, four and a half feet, maybe that'll work. So let me show you what I did. So first, let's just take a look at this antenna on six meters. You can see I've got my Rig Expert Stick Pro and a little SMA uh, to PL259 adapter with this MFJ 1714S whip. Nothing else is connected to it, as you can see. And if we take a measurement on six meters, we can see that it's pretty good and terrible. We start to see a dip towards the higher frequencies, but that's actually way the heck up if we go to like 68 megahertz. That's where it's resonant meaning this antenna is too short. But if we just touch this and do that same scan again, you can see that the antenna is interacting with my body, meaning my body is a counterpoise, and we now have lower SWR. So that got me thinking, what if we added the right length counterpoise, can we get this resonant this two meter antenna resonant on six meters. Well, check this out. I took a bit of spare wire. This is 26 gauge high vis soda beams wire that I use for like everything. And I attached it to this little alligator clip. Now don't ask me where the heck I got this. It's just a cheapo alligator clip with a little screw there to screw the wire into that you can attach to the ground side of the antenna. From this screw, to the end of the wire is 56 and three quarter inches. And I just, I basically just cut this long and you can see all the trimmings. I just kept trimming it down until I got it uh, resonant. Now, let's see how this works. So now we can take this little counterpoise here and attach it to the ground side of the antenna and watch what happens with the SWR. Look at that, 
1.01 .01 at 50.8 megahertz. You just got the entire six meter band just by adding this counterpoise. Now we can actually move this up and see how that just raised the frequency a little bit depending on where you want to be in the six meter band. Raises it up a little bit. You might need to trim the counterpoise. So what can you do with this on an actual HT? The first thing you can do is connect your wire to a ring terminal like this and slide it over your antenna connection. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one that will fit on this radio, but basically you slide that over your antenna connection and then you can screw your Abri in thusly. The other thing you can do is check on your radio where you might have a connection from the ground side of your antenna port to some of these screws. So if we just test for continuity, we touch the shield side of our antenna connection to some of the screws. So you can see both of these back screws are connected to ground as well as this little wrist strap part and the charging port and even some of the screws on the faceplate here are places that I can connect this wire to this HT, as I have just done here. So now, I'm just gonna rest that there. To test for continuity, we've got one end on the antenna connector, and the other touching the end of this counterpoise wire, and we've got continuity. So we are connected to the ground of the antenna port. Then I can screw my antenna back onto my HT, and, I just so happen to have some six meter repeaters in my area, and I'm really curious if I can hit any. So let's go find out. So this first repeater says it's 45 miles away. We'll try and hit that. K at MRD testing. Did not raise it. I, this radio only puts out maybe a watt on six meters though, so I don't know how effective this is gonna be. K at MRD testing one, two. Yeah, we're not getting it. Could be a dead repeater too. I'm gonna program another one, see what we can do. This next one's 57 miles away. I think it's, I don't know where it is. K at MRD, testing one, two. No dice there. Testing one, two, K at MRD. Not opening that. And this repeater is 65 miles northeast of me, so might have a better line of sight there. K at MRD, testing one, two. And no dice. Let's go over here. K at MRD, testing one, two. It doesn't work. So I can't hit any repeaters, but it kind of works. So unfortunately we didn't have any luck raising any repeaters. I honestly have never really tried six meter FM repeaters on an HT, uh, but I did try to raise those same repeaters on my 7610 here in the shack. I couldn't raise them either. So it's either those repeaters aren't actually operating right now, or the bands are just terrible and I can't get 65 miles or less into one of those uh, six meter repeaters. But the proof of concept is there. Yes, you can. But with the Abri, we don't have the ability to kind of test this and uh, like clip the uh, alligator clip on here like I did. Uh, but that shouldn't be a big deal. If you have an analyzer, just clip it to the bottom like I did uh, initially and you should get yourself pretty darn close and hopefully you have more six meter repeater activity than I do in my area to make it worthwhile or just buy a six meter antenna. But either way, that was a really fun experiment and I'm surprised that I got the SWR that low across the entire six meter band. So if anything, I had fun just making that happen. So thank you so much for writing it. That was a really cool experiment. Next, we've got a question about antenna analyzers. This one says, short and sweet one. I'm in the market for an antenna analyzer and I'm struggling as to which one to get. Rig expert stick or zoom? So I personally own the Rig Expert Stick Pro and I love it. 
I do not have uh, a rig expert zoom to compare. I have used them in the past. I was sent to one uh, on loan from Gigaparts to uh, review. Uh, that was, but it's been a few years since I've had a rig expert zoom in my hands. So my memory is a little more fuzzy on that. I'll tell you, they do operate very much the same way. The user interface is uh, pretty much the same darn thing, if not exactly the same thing. The buttons are a little bit different, um, but other than that, all the functionality is going to be exactly the same. So do you want to use this for portable? Are you just going to be using this for home? That might make a difference. This is my Rig Expert Stick Pro in here. This is a little uh, electric toothbrush holder. And I take this with me everywhere. And that's it. It's just very small and compact. I love it. I got the analyzer here. I got the USB cable and a little BNC adapter. That's everything I need. Uh, they both will connect to your phone via Bluetooth. Uh, so they do have an app that you can use. Uh, I'll tell you the Bluetooth connectivity is literally the worst of any application I have ever used in my life. Uh, so it will constantly connect and then you think it's connected and then you go to actually use it as an analyzer function on your phone and you'll tell you it's disconnected. So you have to reconnect and if you even go to another app or close it, it disconnects and you have to reconnect it again. Uh, but as far as analyzers, they're fantastic. So the difference is, let's go to this camera. The Rig Expert Stick Pro, or just the stick in general, is a very simple user interface. And you can see the screen here, and there's a plus and a minus and a left arrow and a right arrow, and those coincide with these buttons here. So if you wanna do, uh, like let's just say we wanna do a single scan, we can hit the minus button and that will show us a scan of whatever frequency we set it to. And we can uh, press the play button or long press it rather to set the frequency. And you just use the arrows here to go higher or lower and these guys to go in between to fine tune the frequency. So it's very easy to use. Uh, you have, let me get to this screen here. Uh, where is it? If we press this red stop button, we'll cycle. So now we're in like antenna analyzer mode, but if we press the stop button, you can see bound TDR time domain reflectometer. So like if your coax has a short in it, uh, you can see that you can check for return losses. Uh, what else do we have here? Stub T, uh, I can't read it here. Cable length, cable loss, just all kinds of stuff. It's it's so incredibly versatile. They're both going to have, again, pretty much the same functions here. So I'm going to hit the plus to go to multi. On the Rig Expert Zoom, basically this multi function on both of these is going to scan all of the frequencies that the analyzer is rated for. So for example, this one goes up to 600 megahertz. So it's gonna scan every band and it's gonna give you a, a snapshot of how good the bands are. Now on, on this, you're just gonna get kind of a one through five star rating. Now there's nothing connected, so we're not seeing anything. Whereas on the Rig Expert Zoom, you've got a big screen and it will show you each frequency that it's resonant on and, and show you the SWR there but you can check multiple frequencies. So if you're tuning a multi-band antenna, just with a snapshot by hitting that multi button, it'll check every band it's resonant on and you can make your adjustments accordingly. So it's, it's more a matter of what you wanna use it for. For portable, absolutely the, the, the stick, 100% in my opinion, uh, is the way to go. Um, you know, the, the, the zoom is, is much bigger. Another thing, the stick has an internal lithium battery. There's an 18650 battery in here that you just recharge with a USB-C. They last forever, um, maybe a couple times a year. I have to charge this. So maybe, maybe a little more than that, but, but not very often. Whereas the zoom has, I think, four AA cells uh, that you have to take out and charge with an external charger. They are rechargeable that come with it, but uh, I think it came with a, with a battery charger, maybe not. I, again, it's been a few years since I've used it, but 
Uh, either way, Rig Expert is a fantastic analyzer. I mean, that's you see me anytime I'm messing with an antenna, I got a Rig Expert in my hand. There's a reason for that because they're that good. And I'm pretty sure I have a discount code to Gigaparts. Uh, I think it's like 5%. So not huge, but hey, do you want to save 5% or not? So pretty sure I have a discount code to Gigaparts for Rig Expert products. If you want to pick one up, uh, do buy it from Gigaparts and do save money. I'll leave a link in the description for you to do just that. So thanks for writing in. I hope that uh, helps answer the question more than it helps confuse it. <laughs> But all the best with whatever you decide, and thank you for writing in. And lastly, we've got a POTA question. This viewer writes, My wife and I arrived at our campsite last Friday afternoon, which was uh, 614, and we stayed until Sunday 616. Of course, I set up my POTA station Friday and worked it a few hours on Friday and a few hours on Saturday. I created my log in Hammers Friday and added to the same log on Saturday. I uploaded my log Saturday evening when I was finished. So my question is, should I have created logs for both days and uploaded two different logs, or did I, did I do it correctly and upload just one log to cover both days? My second question is if I can upload just one log for my entire camping weekend and I contact the same person on two different days, is it considered a dupe in POTA or is it two different contacts made on two different days? So to answer your first question, if you're at the same park, for multiple days, you only have to create one log. That's it, because it's they're all time stamped. So once you upload that log to the Parks on the Air website, their software is gonna know, okay, between these times, he made a contact. And then between these times, the Zulu day is what it goes by. So it knows Friday, whatever the Zulu day you are on Friday, and then the Zulu day Saturday, it just knows that you're there and you don't have to do anything else, one log, one whole week, like when we're at Huntsville Ham Fest and we're staying up at Montesano, I make one log for the entire duration, you know, the five days, whatever, that we're there, and I upload them all as one log. Now, to answer your second question, if you work multiple contacts, again, it's all by Zulu Day. So if you work a guy at 2350, and then you work a guy again at 01, that's two different contacts. But if you work a guy in the morning and then you work him again in the evening, same Zulu day, that will count as a dupe and it will reject one of them. But, you know, you can still upload them to Logbook of the World and stuff because technically they're not a dupe there because it's different times and all that. But for POTA, it's one day, one contact per band. So, and again, if you're on different bands, you can work the same guys, same days. Uh, you just have to change bands. So then he goes on to say, P.S. I know that you moved to Texas and as a lifelong resident of Arkansas, let me be the first to welcome you to SEC country where real football is played. Go Hogs. So I could not care less about football. I have no idea what SEC means. I would go so far as to say that I hate football and I find it to be the most insanely boring sport in the world. However... Texas A&M is only 45 minutes that way, so wouldn't I have to say go Aggies? But either way, thanks for writing in. And if you guys have amateur radio-related questions for me, shoot me an email at k8mrd at icloud.com. My name is Mike. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time. 73.